The discovery of an object from outside our solar system is sparking debate in the scientific community. The object is called 3I Atlas, and NASA says that it's a comet that was first discovered in July. It's currently passing through our solar system, reaching a point about 130 million miles from the sun, and it's just the third interstellar object ever discovered in our solar system. There's lots of questions being asked about where it actually comes from, and some are questioning what it even is. Now, NASA insists everything they've studied about it so far leads them to believe that it's just a normal comet. But physicist Avi Loeb isn't totally convinced. He suggests there's a chance, even if it's just a small one, that the comet is artificially made, meaning it's alien technology. In a series of essays, Loeb has cited anomalies with the comet that he says support the argument of the 3 I atlas being sent to our solar system intentionally, and that, of course, raises questions about who sent it, what their intentions are. Loeb says that even if it's most likely a comet, his alternative hypothesis is worth looking into because of the massive implications it would have for humanity if it turned out to be true. Loeb is also a Harvard professor and founder of the Galileo Project, which was created to search for evidence of extraterrestrial life. He joins us now here on Rising to talk about his ideas. Welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, let's begin by, uh, maybe you could describe the, the characteristics of, of this object. Are we talking about a very large object, a very small object, what its physical components are? Do we know anything about that? Uh, fill us in. As soon as it was discovered, it was obvious that this object is, is quite large. And uh, that was July 1st, uh, 2025. And uh, my wife wanted us to go on vacation, but I realized that I have to write a paper. So I didn't really enjoy the beach much. Uh, and uh, uh, I estimated the size has to be of order Manhattan Island if the brightness uh, stems from the reflection of, of the object. Uh, uh, and uh, turns out that uh, there is a lower limit on its size, which is about five kilometers. Uh, and uh, the mass is at least 30 billion tons, based on the fact that it, it maintains course so far, despite the fact that it's losing 150 kilograms per second. This is a big object. It's uh, a million times more massive than the first interstellar object discovered eight years ago. And the question is, why haven't we... Uh, found millions of smaller objects before we find this giant one. Uh, and then uh, on top of that, it looks as if it's, uh, it came uh, along the plane of the planets around the sun. The chance of that happening at random is one in 500. And the question arises as to whether this trajectory uh, was planned as part of a reconnaissance mission because it's coming very close to Mars, Venus, and Jupiter, unusually close. For that, you need to arrange a special timing so that it will be at the right time at the right place. And it came closest to the sun yesterday. Unfortunately, we can't look at it from Earth because the Earth is on the opposite side of the sun. That could have also been a, a hint of a technological design. Uh, we found in the gas around it, we found nickel without iron, uh, very little iron, uh, mostly nickel, uh, and the only place where we have such a composition is uh, nickel alloys that are produced industrially for aerospace applications. And uh, there was a jet coming from this object, a glow that extended towards the sun during July and August. We don't see that around comets. This is an anti-tail. Usually we see dust and gas which are pushed away from the sun uh, as a result of the solar radiation pressure or the solar wind. Now, yesterday, uh, the, the first uh, report about what it's doing closest to the sun came out. Uh, these are uh, uh, instruments that are capable of looking very close to the sun. And uh, it was uh, realized that, in fact, the object is brightening. Uh, it becomes uh, very bright right now as uh, it comes close to the sun, and it's turning blue. And the color blue is very surprising because if there is any dust shed off uh, a natural uh, a nucleus of a comet, uh, the dust would make it red. And uh, usually the surface of the object is at least an order of magnitude cooler than the surface of the sun. But what the new data indicates is that the object is bluer than the sun. How is that possible? Uh, for that, you need to arrange a temperature somewhere on the object, which is higher than the temperature of the sun in order for it to be bluer than the sun. And the sun has a surface temperature of 5,800 degrees Kelvin above absolute zero. That's huge. 
you know, that's more than, that's 20 times the temperature on Earth right now. Mm. So the question is, what is going on? And I'm saying it could be a black swan event where we expect it most likely to be a natural object, but we have to attend to the possibility that it might not be natural just because the implications would be huge for humanity. Now, Avi, I'm not going to lie. I was a little bit freaked out when I first read this news. I'm like, 3AI, what's a 3AI Atlas? But now that I want to understand, people could see you and know that you are a smart man. We're not talking about somebody on X who just pointed out some random conspiracy theory you're in teaching at Harvard. Explain why you're not getting the response that you're looking for from professionals and other leaders like NASA team to really look into this. What's the issue? Yeah, the issue is that scientists, and that's completely justified, very often are attracted to the most likely explanation. Uh, that's what establishes them as experts. Experts are relying on past knowledge. But here we have a blind date with an interstellar visitor, and it's a blind date of a type that we've never had before. So relying on past knowledge is not a good practice. But more importantly, usually, you know, if you look at a, an exploding star at the edge of the universe, it has no implications for society. So it's better not to take risks and say, oh, that's an exploding star of a type that we understand. However, in a case where you have a visitor to your backyard, the visitor might enter through your front door. That's a situation where there is an important threat to humanity, and therefore, even low probability events have to be taken seriously. That's something that the scientific community, including NASA, does not necessarily understand. Now, NASA does understand the fact that there could be rocks that come close to Earth, and we know that the dinosaurs were killed 66 million years ago by a giant rock the size of Manhattan Island. We know that, and therefore NASA has a plan to discover near-Earth objects that could pose a threat to us if they are rocks. But NASA did not think as of yet about the possibility that an object uh, which has some technology in it might be in the sky even though NASA itself launched a lot of technological objects into the sky. And I'm just saying NASA is not the most accomplished space agency in the Milky Way galaxy since the Big Bang, 13.8 mm. billion years ago. We better recognize that. Uh, it would be arrogant to claim that NASA is the only agency polluting space with technological objects. So if there was another NASA-like agency around an exoplanet billions of years ago, simply because the parent star uh, formed billions of years before the sun, we know most of the stars formed before the sun. The sun just is a late star that formed just in the last one third of cosmic history. The point is that their gadgets could have arrived at our backyard by now, because even Voyager takes less than a billion years to cross the entire Milky Way galaxy. And that's enough time for gadgets from other civilizations to have reached us. So we should be open-minded when we see new objects that are anomalous. Unfortunately, most scientists do not take risks. I'm saying, well, it's fine not to take risks, except when it, you deal with an implication to humanity or society, we have to consider these possibilities and we have to collect as much data as possible. That's my point. If it turns out to be a natural object, which it may very well be, uh, so be it. Uh, what could be the worst case scenario that we know much more about it? But we cannot just dismiss it as a natural object that we don't need to take data about. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Loeb, thank you so much for joining us to uh, elucidate that. Very fascinating. Thanks for having me. Next up, podcaster and actress Jennifer Welch is being heavily criticized for comments that she made on the last reaction to Charlie Kirk's death. We'll handle that up next.